What's going on guys, National Master James Canty III here and today we're covering a line in the Hyper Accelerated Dragon that was requested actually, it's the Queen takes D4 after C takes D4. So let me show you guys exactly what we're talking about right here in the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. It's going to be E4, C5, Knight F3 and G6. After G6 they have the natural and usual move D4 and after D4, C takes D4 can be answered with Knight takes D4 but Queen takes is one we actually haven't covered much on this channel so we're going to cover this one today after queen takes d4 it is one that's annoying it hits the h8 rook here and you actually have to block with the knight f6 would be just a bad move it looks weird don't play it but what you should be playing is knight f6 here actually and so this looks frightening because e5 is a move they also have a few other moves here bishop b5 and knight to c3 but let's cover the most obvious and what will be played a lot is e5 e5 immediately hits the knight so now you're asking yourself, if I move my knight, he's going to play e6 and attack my rook, and it feels dangerous here. And what you can do is start by attacking the queen. Just because I have one piece threatened doesn't mean that I should move it, okay? They call it an equal or stronger threat. So knight to c6, I'm hitting the queen, which is greater than the knight, so immediately he has an option to make. Queen c3 has been played, um, queen d1, queen a4, and queen h4, guys. So let's cover a few of them here on this move. <clears throat> Okay, let's start with queen d1. Queen d1, usually they just come back. This can happen. But immediately, you hit this man with a move. This is the hyper-accelerated dragon by the Jedi, of course. So you're going to know after queen to d1, this is not the best. They need to keep an eye on this pawn. After knight takes e5, knight takes e5, queen a5, hit that man with a move. Hit that man with a move. Queen a5, check, and that is a pawn for you. No matter how they block it, we're going to take this. And now we're up a full pawn already out of the opening. So they have to watch out for that. Queen h4 is the same response. Queen h4, knight takes e5, knight takes check, and they have nothing to do but to block the check. And no matter how they block the check, we answer with queen takes, and then maybe even here in, in this case. That's pretty rough. But queen h4 and queen d1, so we have those in the bag. Queen c3 is one of my favorites, and I'm going to show you guys this quick trap. I have done this to many, many people, many, many people, guys. I play e6 here, and I play it quickly. I play it very quickly because if you're playing a game online and you play it very quickly or even over the board, it feels like you're just making a mistake in a way. E6. Now, of course, this is not the standard move. You also have knight to E4. And I'll just briefly show you this line. Queen E4 and D5. After en passant, there's knight takes D6. And then you can play bishop G7 and castles. That's one line to play. I like playing this one because you'll be surprised how many people fall into this trap. They immediately take the knight and then bishop B4 and the queen's gone. Start a new game, big fella. I got you. That's not a move. Bishop b4. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Pinning the queen to the king, and it's in trouble. That's a wrap. So, queen c3. So, we have those answered. We got this one down. We play knight takes e5. Knight takes e5 on this one. Queen c3. We play e6. Set him up with the trap. I guarantee you're going to catch some people with that one. And then queen a4 is the standard. They also have queen e3. Queen e3 has happened before, not played as much. It's kind of just the same as the queen a4 line. You play knight to d5 and then knight to b6. And it, it transposes into what happens if they play queen a4. So after queen to a4, which is the usual move here, this is the best. The knight to d5. They have queen to b3. Queen b3, I play knight c7. Bishop g7, attack this pawn. Play knight e6 or d5. It's very flexible because you have pieces around the center here. So it's actually pretty fine for you, to be honest. Now, let's go back. Queen to e4. After queen e4, the knight's attacked, and you have knight to c7. This was the old way to play. After queen e4 is knight to c7. The newer and better way to play is knight to b6 due to tactics and things that happen a lot. After knight b6, you have a few moves, bishop f4 being one, knight c3 being one. Let's try uh, knight to c. Let's even do this one. Bishop b5 is another one, too. After bishop b5, we actually play a6 here immediately, and then takes, takes, and the, the theory goes castles, bishop g7. Um, usually they'll go queen h4 and you play h6 immediately and then after knight to c3 we play bishop f5 this is usually how you'll play here sometimes you'll castle queen side sometimes you'll even play g5 honestly because this bishop's defending you can back this bishop up and eventually castle because if you castle immediately h6 is actually hanging so you have to be very very careful of that you gotta be careful of that so after bishop f5 though this is usual I don't usually get to this position because that's not one that I play that much I like to play bishop g7, but the book line is a6, actually, after bishop b5. Usually this one's never played, to be honest. That's kind of like a weird one. But bishop f4 and knight c3 are the main moves. After knight c3, 
Now we have this beautiful thematic push that you want to remember in this queen takes d4 and queen a4 back to e4 line. You would play d5 here. d5, interesting, hitting the queen, opening the bishop, and as soon as the opposite, you hit him with bishop f5. Bishop f5 is really cool. Now if they take on e7, there's a few lines that can happen. They're saying, hey, you take my queen, I take yours with check, and come back and take the piece, so you lose. So what you do is actually take with the bishop here. And then if queen to e2, you castle, castle king side, and you have a nice attack. For sacrificing the pawn rookie eight's happening knight before is in the is in the mix here you see that knight before is happening rook to e8 bishop f6 like you have a very nice attack and he can't untangle right now so this bishop can't get out which means he has to move the queen which means he's going to try to castle queen side but it's not it's going to be it's not going to be enough knight before is very scary that is a real threat hitting c2 rookie eight is another real threat so you have to be careful uh as as uh, white here it's a very nice pawn sack after bishop f5 so instead of a uh, knight to c3 they play the same thing bishop f4 is another move to play after bishop f4 we still go d5 and then after pawn sacrifice bishop f5 here and now this one's a little bit different if they do go d takes e7 here then we actually take the queen oh no you can still play bishop takes let me actually check the engine real quick Yes, yeah, bishop takes e7. Same thing. Bishop takes e7 because you'll get in trouble. You drop some material, I think. So bishop takes e7 is a little bit better. And then castles with the same mindset. Rook e8, knight b4 being in the mix here. I've played this for a long time and had a lot of success with this little pawn sack line. So kind of no matter what they do, I'm, I'm expecting and anticipating d5 and bishop f5. Unless they play bishop b5, which actually does stop d5. Bishop b5, d5 can't be played. I mean, it can, but after en passant, like, we have this, which is not the same. Not the same. Not the same, guys. So pay attention to that one there. So that's that's the gist of it on the E5 one, guys. You just play knight to C6. I recommend you watch this video over and over and over so that you can get the, the theory down and understand the queen moves that they have here. Queen A4 is the best. Any other move usually doesn't work. Well, queen A4 and queen E3 are virtually the same move. Queen e3, we go knight d5, they go queen e4, and actually, sorry, knight to b6. And then here, the same thing if they go queen a4. Queen a4, knight d5, queen e4, knight b6. Same thing. Same thing there. Any other move, though, is going to be hit with knight takes c5, queen a5. Or if they play queen c3, we play e6. So this is how you can combat the e5 one. It looks scary, but this is my favorite one, but it looks scary. It's just nothing to it. The other moves, you have bishop b5 and knight to c3 here. Knight to c3, some of the best players play, actually. Uh, I actually got a draw. One of my first Grandmaster draws over the board was with Kodrick Davis, Grandmaster. And I played black, and he played this line. And we did. Uh, we actually got here. Let me actually show you this briefly. Knight to c6, queen a4 is the main move. d6, and then e5. e5 is a main move here. And what he was expecting was d takes e5. Now, you can play d takes e5. And this is how you would play it after d takes, knight takes, and bishop d7. There's many lines that can happen here. I usually don't like playing this way because I like the Roman D. G. Hashvili way that I tried against a grandmaster over the board and ended up getting a draw in a slightly better position. But they do say that this way is not, you're, you're sacrificing a pawn in a way, because this is what happens. After you play knight to g4, right, e takes d6, instead of taking back, and uh, you play bishop g7 here, again with the same kind of way of sacrificing a pawn, what happens is after pawn takes e7, if they go for it, queen takes e7 check immediately. Now he has to answer this check. Queen e4 loses on the spot. Bishop takes c3. Start a new game. This is a family channel. Let's just get this off the screen. Pawn takes, queen takes e e4. Let's just go back real quick. So you can't do that. Now what you have to do, if it's 94, you can play f5 to win the piece. And if bishop e3, of course, you take it. So he's only really only has one move, which is bishop e2. Blocking this way, what I like to do is castles, and after castles, there's another ca If they castle, which seems like a logical move, you just bishop takes c3. He's moved, removed the cover of the e2 uh, bishop. Takes, queen takes, and rookie one looks like your queen's trap. You literally have nowhere to go but a6, or taking on f2, and the game's over. That's how you would play that line if um, if knight to g4. I played knight to, knight to g4, and what's funny is after the game, we briefly looked at it, and he was like, yeah, I've never seen this move. And I'm like, bro, this is old theory. I was hyped. I was like, Roman DG Hodge really gave me this. Shout out to my boy Roman. Let's go. You know, Roman DG Hodge really did that. So he uh, he hooked me up with knight to g4, and um, it's been working. But what happens is they can get... A, uh, a a slightly, I guess, like, I'm, I forgot how they actually supposed to play this, but it's harder to play as the engine. Like, let, let me show you. Engine says, 
right now is equal. So like, yeah, I'm down a pawn, but it's equal and I'm playing a human. So if I'm playing a human, they're, they're going to make mistakes. And here, especially if they're not used to this line, I actually ended up getting a draw with the grandmaster um, over the board. So it tells you that this will, this line still works, guys. This line still works. So I, I prefer the knight g4 line because people aren't prepared for it. And after captures, they're thinking you're going to capture queen d6. But we actually play bishop g7 for development and castling. If they don't take the second pawn, then you end up capturing either this way or queen takes. Sometimes even e5, like if bishop f4, e5, then take with the pawn, the queen. Sometimes. Like it depends on the position, guys. Make sure you're, you're, you're aware of what's going on. But that's the way that I would play that one there. And this, that's the knight c3 line. Grandmaster told me he'd never seen it before. I was like, oh, man, I'm hype. That's what's up. So knight to c6 is the, the move you would play after knight to c3, um, which usually, honestly, always goes queen a4. They don't go anywhere else. Queen four, queen a4, queen a4, d6, e5, knight g4, and then bishop g7 after captures because we are hitting this pawn a few times. I mean, this queen is pinning this one, but this pawn and the knight are able to capture this while this one is still pinned. So let's go back a little bit. Uh, that would be here. Yeah, instead of knight c3, bishop b5. Yeah, bishop b5 is uh, a weird one, I will say. It is a weird one. There's also another line with e5 involved. I think it's, is it this one? Yeah, I think it's this one. Let me see. That would be, um, yeah, a6. Okay, so a6. a6 hits the bishop. And there's two ways. He can play bishop a4 or e5. This is the final line, basically, we look at here. And these queen takes d4 lines. Is there any other ones? There's one where they castle queen side sometimes. But that one's very rare. a6. And after this a6 move, bishop to a4 or uh, e5. So let's look at both. If they go bishop a4, this is probably the easier one. You play b5 immediately. Not only is my bishop able to go to b7, but I hit this man with a tempo. Bishop b3, we go knight c6, hitting the queen, hitting the queen with the tempo now. And the queen usually goes back somewhere, queen e3, queen d3, something like this. Then you can play bishop g7. And if e5, I always have knight g4, so now I'm hitting this knight, this pawn three times. There's no way to defend it, um, so we're able to win that pawn on the spot. Now, uh, after bishop g7, there's castles. You play d6, knight c3, and we castle ourselves. Like, it's no problems here. Bishop b7 is looking great. We have a great position, honestly. Nothing to worry about there. And white really didn't get anything out of the opening. So what they usually do, the most challenging line, is actually e5. It looks crazy. It's about to get wild. There's pawn takes and pawn takes. What used to happen right here was rook to a4. That was a move. No, sorry, it's a knight to c6 here. No matter what, it's knight to c6. And if queen to h4, queen to h4 is an older line, you actually can play rook a4 here. This is an older line. And then after pawn takes, if you take my queen, I actually take yours right back with check. And then they end up taking our rook. So we take bishop takes e7, queen h6. I'm just showing you guys the older line. And I still play this as well. Um, it, I will I will still play this. I actually don't even play Accelerate Dragon as much anymore. But that's queen h6, rook check, bishop b3. And then they have a b4, I think, or is it knight d4? This one's a little different. Knight d4 or queen b6, or is it b4? I think it's knight d4 for some reason, but I can't remember to follow up. Can't remember the follow up. This gets pretty wild, to be honest, though. Maybe it's king f1. Is it king f1? The knight d4. There's some lines in here where the queen gets trapped a lot. But this is a wild one. It's pretty fun to play. Bishop e3, I think it's b4, to be honest. But you also have knight d4. Knight d4 takes... And then this is not the same. B4, bishop g5, bishop f6. Or did they play king f1? It's an interesting one. Interesting. But this gets crazy, to be honest. This gets very crazy. Um, but after a takes b5, uh, a takes b5, uh, pawn takes, knight c6. Somebody vacuuming. Somebody cleaning up next door. <laughs> So like clean up next door, just letting y'all know what that is. Knight c6 hitting the, the queen on d4, right? But after, uh, let's go back a little bit. Okay, a6, a6, e5, pawn takes, pawn takes, oops. Pawn takes, pawn takes, knight to c6. After knight c6, queen e3, that's the main move. Queen h4 is really not played anymore, but queen e3 is played mostly. Now, what you can do, oh, here's the other line. Let me give you one more. After queen h4, 
This is the newer line. I was I knew this was old. Rick A4 is the old one. The newer one is actually taking this pawn. I just look at this. And after pawn takes castles, and you actually play d5. Looks crazy, looks like you're getting in trouble, but you're actually fine. Bishop e6, knight c3. You can't actually take this. B4, knight to b5, and bishop g7. And then after bishop h6, which looks like it's crazy, you actually just castle. I mean, look at this position. Everything's fine. This pawn is holding down a lot here. So this is the newer line and a more solid line. After knight to d4, you play queen d6. And you have no worries in the world, actually. You have no worries. Black's doing extremely fine here, if you pay attention to that position. But going back here, this is how it usually looks. Usually, after queen h4, rook a4 was a move. I think that's the older lines. The newer stuff is pawn takes f6. And no matter what they're doing, playing d5, blocking right here. This pawn is much better than you think it is on f6. It's a nice pawn, like doing a lot. Bishop e6, bishop g7, getting out the way. Knight c3, we play b4 so we don't give up the free pawn. He goes there anyway, and then we have we have to get out the way just in case, like bishop f4. So we can castle. So he plays bishop h6, thinking he's trying to mate, but there's nothing here. There is no mate. Like, I have the pawn here. I'm good. You can't get any more pieces here. No rook lifts are available. Even if you got to that square, I could take it. So knight to d4, queen to, queen to d6. And this is usually the end of theory here. You can play like rook c8, rook e8. You know, there's a lot you can do. Even knight e5, trying to centralize your pawns a little bit. So it's a, a good way to play in that line. I recommend that one over the rook a4 line because the rook a4 one is very complicated. It does throw people off, and there are some fun little traps. But it is, uh, it's not the absolute best. Knight c6, queen e3 is another move. After queen e3, play e6 here or b4? e6 or b4 e6 or b4 if e6 he has knight c3 and you want to be able to play b4 so it's b4 here guys because b4 you have to stop this knight from developing that was always a key concept because if you don't it gets annoying like if you play e6 knight c3 b4 now he can play stuff like knight b5 knight d5 knight e4 these are this is what you really kind of don't want so you play b4 to actually prevent the knight from developing and if pawn takes, then queen takes e7. If castles, you can take on e3. And if bishop takes, then you have bishop g7 attacking this pawn. If c3, then you just castle and just kind of wait. You can push the d5 pawn and uh, play bishop e6. Sometimes they'll play d6 here instead. They'll play d6 and bishop e6 so they can bully this queen side over here. That's one way to play in this line here. b4 is most likely the best move. Usually that's how, that's how it's played there. And then here's the last one, guys. After... Knight c6, they have one last move they can play here that's similar. Pawn takes e7. So if you take my queen, I take yours with check, followed by taking your knight. So queen takes e7 is the best here because your rook was actually hanging. So you have to take with the queen here to get that tempo back. He plays queen to e3 to not lose his queen, of course. And then we play queen takes e3. Same line in a way. Bishop g7 develop. c3, and then we play b4 to break this up. Usually castles or something, and we're basically in the same line. d6 can happen. Bishop e6 with a4 many things if rook to d1 maybe you could play something like d5 rook takes bishop take bishop e6 and now i'm getting this pawn back with a little bit of interest my pieces are active i'm feeling pretty good here um it's a it's a great game and also i've also seen this move knight a5 which is pretty cool here you can't play b3 because this is hanging i'm also threatening to play knight c4 which is extremely annoying extremely annoying hitting the bishop hitting the b2 pawn you also have moves like b3 coming like even 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 back here, b3 is not the best because now he's just okay. He feels a little better. He can lock this down, and this is actually weak. But this is the queen takes d4 line, guys. It's very, very complicated, but it's easy after you watch this video with the Jedi, guys. I hope you learned something today with this queen x d4. Basically, queen takes d4 on move 4. d4, c takes d4, queen takes d4, move 4 in the hyper accelerated dragon. How you should play against it, things you should do, and things you shouldn't do, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys on the next video.